two ships, P and Q, are moving with constant uh, velocities. The velocity of P is 9i minus 2j. So let's just note that down. Whereas the velocity of Q is 4i plus aj, and they're both measured in kilometers per hour. So make sure we definitely remember that for a later question. Anyway, as for this one, we just need to figure out how to calculate the direction of motion of P given your answer as a bearing. So what this really means, every time we're involved with direction of motion, this is just simply looking at the directional vector or in terms of mechanics, the velocity vector. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and plot this on, on the IJ graph. So just make a little X, Y looking axis. Now, this is telling us that it's moving east, nine across is moving nine across, but two down. So it should be something like here. Okay, so we pretty much can just draw a dot line here. So and we can just say that the direction of P is moved 9 across to the right and 2 down. And all we have to do is simply calculate the angle. Now, because we're working out the bearing, it's always from the north line, right? So we need to find out the total angle from the north line straight to theta. So basically, we're looking at a bearing of literally 90 degrees for, because of the right angle. Um, 90 degrees plus the the value of theta and that's it this should be the result we're looking for now let's go ahead and calculate um this right angle triangle here yeah? so just plotting over here just to make it easy looking nine and two and we put the angle here we just need to re just recall our soccer tour here so just recalling that every time you the, that the length opposite angle is known as the opposite and that um, the angle next and the length next to it is always known as the adjacent. The long side is always a hypotenuse, but we don't really need that because that's that's irrelevant. So the two things that's related to this one from Soka Toa would be the Toa. Okay, guys, because Toa has opposite and adjacent, so it must be the tan one. So we can say instantly that the equation of interest would be tan of the angle theta equals opposite of adjacent, so two over nine. That's it. Now all you want to do is just tan inverse this. So make sure your calculator is always in degree mode. Yeah. If you guys don't know, if you guys don't know the difference yet, so don't even don't worry about degree or radians. But make sure you it's in degree mode and then tan inverse the solution, and you should get uh, twelve point five. So theta is twelve point five degrees. And that's it, guys. That's literally how you do it. And now you just add ninety to it. So plus ninety, and you should get a total bearing of a hundred and 2.5 degrees voila now common question is this i mean it, there's nothing about position vector but usually if you're given a position vector and velocity why do we not use a position vector well that's simply because a position vector is just simply a coordinate and a coordinate has no angle or direction it's just a single point whereas a velocity like this is a direction this is telling us it's moving nine blocks to the right and two down every single hour so it's always moving like this. So it's always moving in this direction every single hour. So that's why we know there is a direction. And the nearest degree would simply just be 130 degrees. Okay. Okay, guys, here we go. Part B. So I've already taken some information that might be useful for this question. So I'll put down the velocities of P and Q because this is important to solve the rest of these problems. And according to the statement, well, let's have a read of this. So according to this one, when the time is zero, the position vector of P is given to be 9O plus 10J. So this is the initial position vector, right? Because we're at time zero. And as for Q, it's I plus 4J. Now, at time T hours, the position vectors of P and Q are P and Q respectively. So let's find expressions for both. So one thing to know, this statement here at time T hours, this is basically telling us that the general position vector at time T, like in this format, so RT, equals the initial position vector time zero plus the velocity times time. This will give you whatever point you're starting at plus that direction. This will give you the movement it will be at. That will be its exact position from the initial and the direction you're going at, at some time t. Okay, so all we have here, so basically to make sense of this one, to find p, we just plug in 9i plus 10j into r0 and the velocity of in, in its respective velocity vector 9i minus 2j and we just tidy up and then we do the same thing for q so let's do this so replacing rt with the letter p to make sense of it r0 is going to be um 
9i plus 10j. So this is just basically if you know the formula or not. Plus, and then we're going to have the, um, the velocity vector of p is 9i minus 2j times t. And as for q, same thing applies. Position vector, the initial position is i plus 4j. Plus, and its velocity is 4i plus 8j times t. There we go. Straightforward. Now, part C. Hence, show that at time t hours, um, what do we have here? The going from q to p is given by the following. Now, when it says going from q to p, we literally just have to find the, the, the direction from these two vectors. Just think of it like this. You've got a position vector of, um, say, q there and position vector of p. And that's where we're going. We're basically going to that direction. So to find this entire expression, this is simply the difference from p to q. You just do p take away q to get this. Now let's have a, let's let's try that actually. Let's find the difference. So subtracting these vectors across, what do we get? So let's have a look. So we've got 9i minus i, so this will give us 8i. So that's right here. So let's call this um let's do this down here actually. So we have qp. So we're gonna have 8i, good. 10 take away 4 is uh, 6, so plus 6j. Now, 9i, now in terms of t, 9it take away 4it will give us 5it, so plus 5it. Actually, I should write 5ti, makes more sense. And then minus 2 take away a to give us minus 10tj. Now, to make it in this format, well, you can see that they just factorize in terms of i's and j's. So in terms of i's, you've got 8i and 5ti. So this combine these two, you get 8 plus 5ti. So yeah, I guess, I guess we've already shown this. I don't necessarily need to represent it here, but just for clarity. And then to make this expression, it's just 6j take away 10tj. And that factorizes out to me 6 minus 10tj. So in a way, when you can prove this one, then you, then you can feel confident that you've got B and C both right. So that's easy five marks in a bag. Now the final part, D. This is the main bulk of the question. So find the values of T when the ships are 10 kilometers apart. Okay, now this is talking about the distance, right? So right now, you can think of this one as a displacement. So this is a vector. But this is also the distance if you took the magnitude of this, value, of this vector. So what I mean by that? We need to use Pythagoras now. Okay, this is this is actually quite a standard one. So we can say first things first. To find the magnitude of QP, this is the distance. We just have to take the square of each of these values and square root the whole thing. So it's basically going to be eight plus five t squared plus six minus ten t squared, and then square rooting it. But and that's it. And the distance will basically be everything equal to ten. So this is now a distance value, so this equals 10. So you just go ahead and solve. So I'm going to go ahead and do it now, yeah? So just to get rid of the square root, I'm going to square both sides, so that disappears and this becomes 10 squared, so that becomes now 100 equals. And so just need a little breather. So now we just have to expand this, these um, double brackets. So this is more or less a quadratic expression. So be careful. Remember, 8 plus 5t is just 8 plus 5t times 8 plus 5t. So we need four terms. And you can reduce it to make 3. So let's go ahead and expand in our own time. So we've got 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 5 is 40t. Plus another 40t, you get 80t there. And then we get 5t times 5t is 25t squared. And then repeat the same here. You should get 36. 6 times minus 10 is minus 60. And another minus 60 is minus 120t. And then minus 10 squared is a plus 100 t squared all right not bad so far so now we just collect like terms so let's just do it on this right side yeah just to make more space so we can say therefore just just to make 100 let's let's make in terms of t squares yeah so combine the like terms so you've got 25 t squared and 100 t squared that becomes 125 t squared in terms of t we've got um 80 and minus 120 that becomes minus 40 t Oh, now here comes the numbers. 64 plus 36 is 100. Take away 100. Oh, that's beautiful. Now equals 0. So that's plus 0. So that, all of this will be set to 0. And now we just um, find the values of t. So just factorize t out. So that's good. 
So I, I thought we do quadratics, and I'm kind of glad we're not. We're not doing that. So be 125t minus 40. So I hope you guys are following so far. So this means t could be zero. So basically, when t is zero, the ships are 10 kilometers apart, or this solution. So 125t minus 40 equals zero. So 125t equals 40, and t equals 40 over 125. Um, and that is equivalent to probably probably one is a decimal. 0 0.32 so t is 0 0.32 and to convert that to hours just um, times it by 60 uh no no so this is 0 point to, to convert to minutes to make sense of it so this is basically 19.2 minutes so so basically when the ships are 10 kilometers apart this happens at time 0 and time 0 0.32 hours and that's it guys, hope this helps and let me know what you guys get and we can compare solutions. Otherwise, I shall see you all soon. Ciao.